The short tutorial video is second of the three videos going through the various statistical simulations in ADS software. In this video, we will focus on performing yield analysis in ADS. So as we have seen in the part one of this video performing Monte Carlo, uh, that simulation uh, gives a qualitative analysis of the circuit uh, by changing the component tolerances in the specified range. Whereas it's very difficult uh, to find out how many exactly uh, circuits are failing uh, to meet our requirements. For this need, the another simulation in ADS which can be performed is known as yield analysis whereby we can check uh, our circuit's pass or fail criteria against the specifications which might be able to set on the design. Performing yield analysis in ADS is a three-step process. Step number one, we set up all the yield specifications against which we want to check our circuit performances under varying uh, tolerances situations. The yield spec setup is very similar to optimization goal setup as demonstrated in one of the other videos. The step number two involves setting up the yield controller and again the key thing will be to find out how many number of iterations or trials needed to achieve sufficient confidence in the results uh, which are obtained after performing simulation. The third step is to assign the tolerances in components uh, such as inductors and capacitors, transmission line uh, and then the optimizer or the simulator in ADS will vary those component values under the specified tolerances. While we will see step 1 and step 3 uh, during the actual ADS demonstration, let's spend some time and understand the yield controller setup and how to find required number of tolerances, required number of trials in in performing these kind of simulations in ADS. So as can be seen on on the slide, um, yield analysis confident tables can be found under ADS documentation and this gives idea to designers to choose their confidence levels they are looking at, the error which can be tolerated uh, in the simulation results and what is the actual yield of the circuit performance. So if you take a specific case of confidence level of 95% where the circuit yield is around 90%, in order to achieve the results with plus minus 1% of error, that means the estimated yield could be somewhere between 89% to 91%, we will require 3,457 trials to be run on ADS. Now let's move ourselves to ADS and perform a simple yield analysis to see how these three steps can be accomplished in ADS software and how can we assess the output of those simulations. Now let's start how yield analysis can be performed in ADS by taking example of simple low pass filter which is also used in some of the earlier videos. If you perform simulation on this low pass filter we can see the low pass filter is having a pretty nice transmission response as well as return loss is better than 20 dB till 100 megahertz. Now if we have to start the statistical uh, setup in ADS we can again go to the same library of Optimistat and DOE and for step number one we can place this yield specification goal here and we can double click and start entering the parameters pretty much like how we did for optimization. For transmission, we will set a goal of S21 and we add a simulation instance which is SP1. We add the limit line against which we would like to check the performance of our circuit. So for transmission response and passband, we would like to set the result, the, the value to be minus 3. And the max, we don't care because the passive filter so it won't go anywhere above 0 dB. So we can just define the minimum limit and we would like to ensure the transmission response doesn't go below minus 3. If it goes, it will be marked as fail criteria. Then range variables, we can define the range variable of x-axis which is frequency and the keyword is freak. The passband start frequency around 1 megahertz and passband stop frequency is around 100 megahertz. So one of the specifications have been uh, placed on a schematic. For step number two, we can add the yield 
controller and as demonstrated on PPT we can do the calculations to find out what's the maximum number of iterations or minimum required iterations we will need in order to have sufficient confidence. For this present demonstration purpose we are going to use 250 iterations to find out what's the yield spec on these components. For the step number three of assigning statistical variability to the component values we can go to simulate simulation variable setup statistics tab and we can start defining the statistics for each of these components. So we can again like in Monte Carlo video we can choose the percentage variation format and for inductors we are going to use uh, plus minus 10 percent and for capacitors we are going to use plus minus 5 percent of variation. So in turn this will produce a very similar looking response to the Monte Carlo simulation but before we go ahead and run the simulation in the yield controller we can set the save all iteration option to yes so that ADS stores all the statistical traces during the simulation process. So we can launch the simulation now and once the iterations are finished we can see the graphs which are very similar to Monte Carlo simulations. But additionally above uh, performing this kind of statistical, st statistical variations ADS yield analysis will also capture the actual yield of the circuit against the yield spec which we have set in a schematic. To plot the yield number we can use this table plot and drag it to the size we want and we can see in data set we have a parameter called yield. We can display this yield by adding it and right now it tells us that for the pass band criteria all the circuits are meeting our specifications hence the yield is 100%. Now let's go and add one more specifications on this yield by clicking and adding one more spec for transmission response which is DBS21 and we would like to add this for the rejection uh, criteria which we were designed originally for minus 40 dB from the frequency range of 250 megahertz to 500 megahertz. Once the second goal is defined we can rerun the yield analysis again to see if the yield is still 100% or it has gone down a bit because um, okay one mistake which we have done so it's good that users are seeing that so if we miss to add the analysis which needs to be performed after checking this yield the ADS will give you this error so we can double click on it and we can choose the simulation instance name which is SP1 and we can rerun the simulations. So after the simulation is performed we can see the yield has dropped down to around 61.2 because it can be seen around 250 megahertz there are a few circuits which are above minus 40 and that is causing those filters to fail the performance criteria. Now for written loss let's add another uh, yield specifications and there is no limit how many yield specifications can be added we can add another yield specification and this time we will type S11 and we will not repeat the mistake of not using SP1 and in the performance of S11 we would like to check it against minus 15 dB in a frequency range of passband which is from 1 megahertz to 100 megahertz. So now we have three goals on a schematic where we started with 100 percent yield it got dropped down to around 61 percent yield and now let's see with all three knobs turned on what's the circuit response to these three specifications. So as can be seen with all three specifications in place the actual yield of our circuit is around 33.6 percent which essentially means out of 100 only 33.6 circuits is going to meet my specifications for all three performance criteria and for production or manufacturing environment this is not a very viable option to do because this will have lot of uh, money loss and lot of circuits will get wasted because of the performance meeting. In part 3 of this video we will try to run sensitivity histogram and we will try to locate the faulty parts which are causing this low yield. Stay tuned for part 3 of this video. Have a nice day.